everybody. Uh, welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. Um, we're here at Axminster Tools in Devon. Um, my name's Ben. And today we are looking at a second part of our, um, our carving uh, project. We are doing a, a wood spirit or a tree spirit, um, a really kind of common thing in carving. Um, and we're using the kind of traditional um, chisels, gouges, and, and a mallet. Okay, so very kind of, um, well, and it's not old school, is you know, lots of people still carve this way. Um, a very kind of traditional, um, you know, basic hand tools. Um, so we're, we're looking at um, a nice little project to get you going uh, with those sorts of tools. Um, like we were saying, there's lots to carving. There's lots of different ways we could approach this. Um, and we are going to look at those through the next, through the coming months. Um, we've got lots of power carving and lots of cool stuff we can show you. Um, but today, we're keeping it with our, our chisels and a mallet. Um, if you come, this is the, you know, the, the first time you're seeing this, um, you know, go back and check out uh, part one where we just roughed out um, our little tree spirit um, and we just put a rough shape on it. Um, we start to define the nose and put a moustache and, and things like that. Um, so, you know, really basic stuff. Um, but and today we're going to add a little bit more detail. We're going to put a mouth in. Uh, we've got a couple of eyes to put in. Um, we'll keep it quite kind of stylized and, and, um, and you know, you're, you're going to see all the chisel marks in it. It's going to be that kind of a project. Um, so, you know, this is going to be a, a kind of a rustic thing, and this would probably live outside once it's done. Um, this bit of uh, pear has got a bit of rot in the middle here, um, so it wouldn't really live inside anyway, and we don't want it. Um, we had a couple of the um, people yesterday asking about things splitting and, and, and things like that. This is very likely to split. Um, so I think it's something that goes outside and it kind of lives out there and, and slowly degrades. And it, it looks really cool once it's, um, you know, starting to break down a bit as well. But enough of me waffling. Let's have a look at, um, at putting some more shape onto this, uh, refining it up. Um, I've got my 314, so three sweep, um, 14 uh, millimeters wide. And I just want my straight gouge as well, my 116, so it's a bit wider, a bit flatter, and I think we're going to use a couple of other chisels, but I'm going to leave them in my little tote for the moment. We don't want too much um, clutter on the, on the bench here, and too many sharp edges rolling around. Okay, so we've got our first question. Yeah, good afternoon everybody, and um, then we've got a question from Martin. Yeah, he wants to have a go at this. What chisels would you recommend, just to start with? Yeah, so these Kirschen ones are really good. Um, it depends how kind of big or, or you know, if, if, you're, if you're doing something like this, I would recommend these, these kind of um, single gouges. Um, there are various sets you can get, and you want a little bit of variety, a little, um, a few shapes on there. So I would, I would go with like something straight, like a number one, or, you know, at a push, you could use your kind of woodworking chisel. That's still a, a straight um a straight bevel gouge and then we need something with a bit more curve so the ones that i commonly use i've got a, a 314 there that's an 1116 that's got that really big round on it okay can't quite see that on camera but that's a really a deep round um you're going to want some sort of v tool okay and there's, there's variations on these chisels. It depends really um, whether you're um, comfortable with a mallet and chisel or whether you want to go the kind of palm chisel route where they've got the smaller handles, a little bit more kind of smaller and, and kind of controlled cuts. It depends on the scale of your project. Something like this, uh, where we want to take a fair bit of material off, I would go with a gouge with a nice sturdy handle. Um, but have a look around. There's, there's various sets you can get and make it a little bit cheaper. Um, or individually, you can get your, um, you know, the chisels that you that you want. Okay. Good. So let's pop that back. Like I say, we don't want too many gouges out on the bench here. Um, 
first job. I'm just going to have a little tidy up around the, the mustache here. We've got some um, bits in here that I just want to get rid of. And let's define the nose from this mustache. So we're going to put a little bit more shape on that. I think we need to get a couple of nostrils in there and a little mouth. So let's work in, in this area to begin with. Okay. So straight gouge. I'm going to just put a little line in here for his mouth. And I'm using the um, the straight edge. The bevel is 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 this side, so we're going to get a nice straight line. Just come up a bit. I say a straight line. I'm putting it at a bit of an angle. I like these things to have a bit of character. We don't want all these square straight edges. Um, but these are. This one I'm putting at a bit of a jaunty angle, so he's he's got just a little bit of expression. And I'm just picking up on the line I had before, just getting the corner of the chisel in there, and then laying the cutting edge down, give it a little tap. All right, that's going to help keep that cut nice and um, nice and straight. I'm coming to my little curved one, my my three fourteen, and I'm just going to. Gently pair up to that stop cut. A bit like we did with the brow. Let's just remove these chips as we go, see what what needs cutting. Let's come out. Um, let's put a little bit more on there. So this is kind of his bottom lip. His top lip has been covered with his moustache. And because we've got this kind of variation in colour, I'm not actually having to do much carving to make a really kind of bold um, look to it. I'm just carving down a little bit deeper. Any little kind of sharp bits we can go in, engage the corner that chisel and just push it along almost using it like a little knife and just pulling out any chips because although we we're gonna it's quite a rustic project we still want to you know have a nice kind of tidy carving we're going to see those chisel marks but we don't want this kind of loose um, these kind of fibers and you'll get that more with this wet timber this is a, a wet piece of um, pear much more fibrous um, than the dry stuff and a bit more kind of kind of stringy if you like sharp gouge is going to cut straight through it it's giving me a lovely finish and to begin with I'm just kind of flattening the surface. I'm, I'm carving down to where I want it, and we'll come back in and we'll put that lovely texture back in with a, um, you know, with a bit more shape on the chisel. We will achieve that nice kind of um, faceted look. A um, bit more to do around here. Let's just come in on there. So a little stop cut. I'm just going to walk around the project here and just come in from this side. So my left hand is guiding the chisel. My right hand is providing the force for the cut. And we just want to get rid of some of this um, bark on the edge here. And I'm just kind of tidying up as I go. Just trying to get rid of those little fluffy bits. Good. A little bit more off the top of his moustache here. And then we're going to pop on um, a little bit more shape onto his nose. So I'm just turning the chisel upside down to, to bring that curve that way. And I just want to 
separate his nose from the moustache a little bit. And I'm just using the force of my hand. I'm no, no mallet here. This is very kind of soft, this bit. But we just want a bit more definition in that area. So you can tell where his nose stops and his moustache begins. Just rounding off a bit of his nose here. I'll just give that a softer shape. Uh, both sides, just knocking off that square edge that we put in before. And I'm being really careful not to allow the corner of the gouge to, to cut into the timber here. So I'm just keeping keeping that corner away from his, what will be his cheek or his, where his eye is going to be. And using my left hand to kind of guide the chisel and keep it out of that zone we want to keep nice and clean. So these bits are hanging on. Again, we just want to get in there, sever those fibers and they'll just drop off. Where we did our stop cut on the brow, we went a little bit deeper than we did on the nose here. So as I'm pairing off these little kind of slithers, I'm then having to go back in and just sever them off. Really nice little projects, this. Really kind of quiet, not too much mess. I'm making a few chips, but certainly there's no dust. Um, no worry about, you know, too much PPE. I'm, I've not got goggles on. I've, um, there's no dust mask. I'm just nice and relaxed. and just working away slowly at our little project, really kind of relaxing pastime. And like I say, it's perhaps not very productive. It's a slow, you know, a nice slow um, hobby. But for me, that's part of the beauty of it. It's relaxing. It's, um, you know, I'm using it as a bit of relaxing therapy to just take my mind off the day-to-day -day and get lost in a cool little project. And, and you end up with something really nice. These look really nice in the garden. Sort of peeking out the hedgerows and... Things like that. Okay, so we've got a kind of a bottom lip in there. All right, we've just got a little step um, we've produced, um, and I've just trimmed that bit underneath it. Okay, um, I've, I've just rounded off the nose across this arch of the, of the nose here. Um, and I want to keep that kind of, I, I've skimmed off the really dark bark on the top, and I've left that kind of mottled um, bark that just lives underneath giving him one of those kind of bulbous old noses. Looks a bit like my grandpa, minus the moustache. Good. Just want to get down in here. Still got a little bit of that brown bark so I'm just going to come in I've got a little again it's cushion it's a little chip knife but I just want to bring that in and just expose that kind of white timber underneath again just a little a little detail like that really can make a big difference <laughs> I do the same this side although it's kind of casting a shadow on this side we 
we want to keep it nice and uh, parallel. Always supporting myself with this knife, two hand job. I'm using one hand to kind of steady and anchor myself. The other hand is cutting in and doing the work. Good. So what else we want to do on here? I need to clear a bit off the top because he's got this kind of funky crown thing going on at the moment. Um, that was just a bit of a quick stop removal um, from yesterday. Um, well, I think it's quite nice having that broken um, up shape on the top rather than bring it right the way up um, like he is um, at the bottom there. I think I'm going to leave a little bit of pattern up on the top here. So we've moved across to the VTool. I'm coming the other direction now. I'm coming down into our, um, you know, down towards the brow. Coming up to my stop cut there and really trying to bring this brow and get it nicely defined in his big bushy eyebrows as we go. So this V tool has given me this kind of sharp spiky look on the top. I think it looks really nice. So we'll, we'll carry on with that. We'll get that coming right the way around. Again, this hand is acting as a brake, this one driving it. If you were doing something like this and you accidentally knocked off one of his eyebrows, say the bark was coming loose or something like that, and you really wanted that look, just keep hold of that chip, put it one side, um, put it safe with the tools or something, um, and you can always glue that back on. Okay, let's come back to this other chisel. This uh, I'm on the 314 again. I seem to keep coming back to this one. It's got that gentle sweep. Really useful tool, this one. And again, what we're trying to do is just define these eyebrows. Where we put that stop cut in, it's just peeling off next to that using the chisel just to lever it a little bit. Bit of movement in the vise then, so let's keep that nice and tight. We don't want this slipping or moving. So keep doing those little checks as you go. If you feel something move, just want to tweak that back in. Let's keep things nicely held. And this is just my version of, there's loads of different um, types of these tree spirits. The green man's quite a nice one. If you're feeling a little bit more adventurous, he's got um, leaves on his head. I did a pyrography one not too long ago. A little commission. And that was really nice. Some people call these grotesques because they're kind of a little bit funny looking. Um, so you'll get that name as well. They've got some really nice um, designs on those. See them on, not wooden ones, but um, you see the stone ones on the sides of um, Buildings, old buildings, churches and stuff. So just taking my time here just to remove this bit of bark. 
Let's just get those eyebrows nicely defined. And then we can get in and do the eyes. Um, any questions you got today? Um, Craig's looking after us on the questions. Uh, we've got Jason on the cameras. Um, so any questions you might have, just far away. We'll answer them as we work. So starting to get a little bit uncomfortable working in that position. I'm twisting my body right the way around now. So let's come back around this way. Again, let's anchor ourselves. Let's, I'm putting my arm right up against the project. This one, the limiting hand is up against the top of his head here. And I'm just carving down to that stop cut. Now he's got a good set of eyebrows. Use a little brush, get rid of any of this kind of loose stuff on the surface. That's just a little brush and I've trimmed the bristles down a bit so it's a little bit stiffer, um, not so soft and I'm just going to go for it there and then come back in because I want to keep that kind of spiky look to it. Come back in the other way with my VTOL. So I'm slipping a little bit there. And this wet timber and that kind of tough bark and then the soft stuff underneath. As soon as you get through that top, top layer, we've got that wet bark in underneath. So it's a kind of a controlled slip. Let's get rid of those loosey bits and all those marks. Ah. Good. And you could keep working at that. You could give him a little hairdo. If you had something a bit longer, um, quite often it's quite nice to get this little fade going out. So let's come over to our, there we go. So we're on that one. See how it kind of comes back into the timber. Um, and again, that was a bit of wet timber, and you can see he's got a great big split running down his nose here. So that's what's likely to happen. But I just think that's part of it. It's part of this um, kind of carving. Really difficult thing to dry something in the round. Or something that's a round log, I should say. Um, so what are we going to do next? Let's put some eyes in, I think. Quite happy with this. I like this kind of natural barky um, edge. Um, and like I say, want to keep it nice and um, kind of rustic looking. So I'm not doing too much tidying up. I'm just keeping an eye out for those loose fibers. Here and there. Good. Um, I just want to show you a couple of cuts. So if we come into the camera four here, Jason, I want to show you a couple of cuts before we actually carve the eyes. Okay. Again, just be careful you're not catching yourself on, on little bits. But I just want to show you this cut here. So we can start a cut. Okay. 
and um, I'm just going to slide the chisel off to one side and that's almost like you're peeling it off so I'm not going straight I'm doing a little kind of diagonal side swipe that gives you a really nice finish it's following the um, the kind of shape of his face around his cheek here. And those little cuts are really nice and controlled. And they, like I say, give you a lovely finish. Good. Just a little bit I want to clean up here. And then we're going to put his eyes in, I think. So I'm not going to carve the eyes. I'm going to use my big um, 11 sweep 16 gouge to give me the profile that I want. Okay. This is going to be a kind of um, closed lid type of eye. Okay. Look really like a kind of a sleepy old man. bit stylized you could carve in your eyes like we've done on some of the others there I quite like this look at the moment and it will give me a chance to show you a couple of little techniques so I'm literally just dropping that chisel that big wide gouge with that heavy sweep right down up against his brow so the wings of the uh, gouge are touching the brow and I'm going to give it a good heavy whack and I'm gonna tip it over a little bit as well and give it another one there because this is rounded we want to keep um, a similar depth right of the way along the cut so I started off there put the chisel or gouge over a little bit and give it another whack and then we should have a consistent depth okay so on the other side as well Good. Now, as that is, you can just about see the outline of it. If we come in nice and close now, Jason, camera four, we can just about see the outline on that one. Um, these might kind of close up a little bit. So what we're going to do is do a little cut chasing up to that. And remember, we want that nice texture to start appearing. So I'm going to use, um, this is a nine sweep eight. Um, let's have a little look what else we've got in here. We've got an 11.4 there. That's a little bit too tight. So I'm going to go with this one. This is the um, nine sweep, eight mil wide. And I'm just going to do some little cuts. So handles up, and then I'm going to drop it down and just gently come up to that eyeball. Or lid, I should say. almost like a stop cut is doing its job it's allowing me to come up to but then we're kind of stopping on that cut and the same sort of thing we're cutting up to around now so when I come up to it with my flat chisel I'm having to just swing the handle to get into that um, you know right up to that little stop cut there and these almost look like little flower petals these type of cuts going back in with the other one I've gone a bit deeper than the the cut itself so let's find that shape with the gouge and just give it a little wiggle and that should sever that off Again, just going a bit deeper. And what this will do, when the um, project is upright, it will, um, 
it will cast just a little shadow under the eyelid there. Again, just using that corner of the, the gouge just to sweep round and see if we can't remove some of that kind of fluff. Good, so same thing the other side. And I'm going fairly slow, keeping control, but also um, so you guys can see what we're doing. Uh, ladies and gents at home. But it's not something I would want to rush. Like I say, these chisels can be dangerous, so just take your time, make sure you're good and safe. Got my little chip carving knife as well. That comes in useful when just, just tidying things up. Good. So we can add, we've added a little bit more depth, and it's already casting just a little shadow under the eye. Okay, so bringing those little cuts up to that um, that nice round that we created really easily with our um, our bigger gouger, the 1116. Um, you know, makes it really easy little job. I'm also going to use about half the gouge to create like a little bag under his eye. He's a bit tired. Oh, man. I'm just giving that a little wiggle to kind of open it up a bit. Again, just locating that in there. Give it a little wiggle. Up to you whether you want to do a bit of carving into that. I'll probably use my little chip carving knife just to make a little scallop underneath it. But you could use that same technique we used for the um, for the eyelid. And what I'm doing there here is just bringing the knife in at an angle that kind of intersects with the cut we made with our gouge. Okay, takes a little bit of force to drive that around, but we should see that just pop out and again, create almost a little shadow line. You don't have to carve really deep to create these um, these shadows. Almost like a optical illusion. So we've given them some little bags on his eyes um, there. And you could do whatever you want with this. Um, take it any direction. You could carve the open eyes with the with the dots. You could drill um, eyes and create shadows that way. Um, <laughs> I'm happy to blow on this. It's not going to puff up dust or anything like that. Um, I've gone back now to my um, nine sweep eight, and I'm going to just use the shape of the gouge to create a couple of nostrils on the bottom. So I've come in at an angle, and then I'm lifting it up and pushing it down into... Uh, that timber or, or it's actually a little bit of layer of bark on top of it so same sort of thing I want to look kind of roughly down our our imaginary center line give ourselves an equal spacing and then just pop that chisel on there not using a mallet this time and just pushing down and getting rid of that little bit of material to put a couple of nostrils on there. Good. 
I can already see this is just starting to open up um, with a little kind of fissure where I've, I've, I've put a cut on and it's naturally trying to open up uh, with all the, the stress and stuff in our, um, in our piece of timber. So this is a kind of point I'll stand back, have a look, see what I think. I think we need to take this out here underneath, underneath the chin, give them a nice kind of longer face. And perhaps on the cheek round here, it looks a little bit narrow on his face. So let's just whiz that off. Only taking light cuts, I'm not going deep. Let's bring all this off down by his cheeks here and just bring that contrast up from his face to his moustache. So this is our flat chisel. Sometimes you'll get a bit and you really have to chase it all the way up to the top because the fibers are still in the wood. So you have to chase it right up to your, your uh, stop cut. Otherwise, if you try and take that off, it will just tear up that line. Good. And you could sand this back. You could have it really nice, smooth skin if you wanted. For me, these tree spirits are kind of a bit rough and ready. Again, as we go through our kind of carving journey, we will look at getting things super smooth and round through sanding and just the chisel work. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm smoothing this all out, getting rid of the coloring that I don't, um, don't want on there and then we will come back in and we'll give it a faceted look just by taking little cuts out here and there give it that kind of rustic look it seems a bit backwards cutting it smooth and then putting a um you know a texture on it afterwards but that's the look i'm going for now, do I want to take that brown right the way off? Let's have a little look over the top there. Yeah, I think we're going to go right down the bottom. And as you do these, you know, this is my, probably my fourth one I've done. Um, you'll start to make decisions each time. You'll think, oh, I like that off the last one, or I didn't like that off this one. And you can start adding in your own kind of flavor, your own take on it. I'm taking that right down to the bottom here and just getting rid of any of those loose fibers. Come off the end here. If any of you guys do give this a go, it'd be lovely to see your photos, see your version of it. On our, pop them in on our woodworkingwisdom.com. Um, and 
It's really nice to see your projects. We see, we see them come through every now and then. I've seen some really nice work you uh, folks are doing at home. Okay. So I've got a bit of a wobble on here where I just touched that. Um, like I say, if you think that's going to peel off, you can either get a bit of thin super glue in behind, get that stuck down, um, or if you're putting some sort of finish on, that will generally soak in and kind of bind the two together. Just looking at the kind of um, overall balance now, we've got a, you know a fairly um, uh, balanced look from side to side. Of course, you don't have to carve all this off. You could have that textured as like a beard underneath. Um, you could use your little veining tool to carve in a beard. Um, let's go with, I'm going to go with this 9-8. Uh, this is um, quite a steep um, sweep on this one. And that's going to give us those lovely facets. And I'm kind of lining these up next to each other. And it'll give you that really nice kind of chiseled look. And just adding a texture to something that's quite flat at the moment. We want to give it that really nice carved look. So just feeling the grain there, it was almost like it wanted to come back the other direction, but we got away with it because our um, gouge is nice and sharp. And if you wanted to put hollows in the cheeks, you know, this is the time to do that. I'm just putting little lines next to each other, really, just down with the up with the handle, pushing along and dropping the handle just to kind of scoop it out. And this is where it's starting to pick up the grain, so we could always come back this way. Okay. So just quietly working away at this. Sometimes you get so lost in it. You've got to remember, you're on camera. <laughs> We're actually showing you something here. Nice. So you're starting to build up that texture. If it's not obvious on camera, I'll show you in a minute. We'll get it up nice and close. This is giving it that lovely kind of hard carved look. And that lovely texture. And as this does kind of biodegrade in the garden, you'll get lovely little um, you know, you've got the high spots and the low spots, and they're all going to weather very slightly differently, giving it that texture, gives it more surface area, allowing more of that kind of 
um, patination you get from weathering to happen. In quite long strokes now, just to move it along a little bit. I've seen these where they've got um, knots in them and people have used the knot as a feature. So perhaps you could use the knot as an eye, as um, you know something else. I saw one the other day that looked like it had a cigar in its mouth where the branch come off the tree. That was really, really fun. Okay, so we've got a question. Well, a couple of comments, really, Ben. Yeah. Um, Maria in Wales said, this is like watching Bob Ross do one of his paintings. She's feeling <laughs> so relaxed and <laughs> And um, Nigel Good said, stuff. Well, I actually thinks it looks like Ringo Starr, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah no i see that it's a bit of a yellow submarine style one and <laughs> yeah you know like the uh um the animation you know the video they <laughs> i could see that i was going for hulk hogan but <laughs> 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 But absolutely, Maria, this is so relaxing. You know, this is something I like doing at home. Um, I say I haven't carved a zillion of these. Um, this is about my fourth or fifth, but I'm already seeing a difference on how I like them and, and what I want to do to them and, and things like that. But don't be too relaxed. We've got to be a bit on guard with our... Um, carving chisels and certainly when you first get going with the chisels like this just please please take your time and and um, until you're confident where that cutting edge is at all times I tend to hold a gouge in my hand like I'm pointing a finger okay when I, when it's not in use it's like a pointy finger and I never point that at anything not myself not my other hand it floats out there, and I know where that cutting edge is at all times. When I'm carving, I've got eyes on it. So again, I know where it is there. So we're just starting to build the texture. And I think we will do some eyes. I've, I know I've, I've kind of come away with a bit of a stylized eye there but i think we'll do some eyes um down the line uh, we'll use a bit of power carving and even a bit of pyrography i use pyrography in carving get some extra fine detail when you start looking at things like um the wading sticks and uh, walking sticks with the you know you get them with fox heads on and dogs heads all of those are finished with pyro get that extra fine cut but we'll again we'll explore all that together okay so another question yeah, Jenny's asked, are some woods better than others for this kind of project yeah they are um the this is a fruit wood this is a pear um the the lime sycamores are really good um but all the all the fruit woods apples cherry pear um i find ash particularly difficult to carve because it's got that open grain. Um, I would come at that with a power tool, so something rotary. But for this style of carving, you want that kind of closed grain in the timber. You don't want it to be too open. Um, uh, let's come to camera four here, Jason. Um, if we can just come on to camera four. Um, let's have a look. See that ash handle on there, the, the, uh, the difference between the, the grain, you've got the hard and soft grain, and it's kind of open. I can feel the texture of the grain in that. And if we were to put a chisel or, or carve into this, obviously we're not going to because it's our handle, um, but it will, um, it will kind of peel away in layers. So if you're cutting down in this way, you'll get a big break along this line. So things like ash can be quite difficult to carve. Um, I would use something rotary, something like a power carver on that. Um, but for, you know, for, for this type of carving, I would stick with, um, especially at first, keep it, 
keep it easy be easy on yourself don't give yourself too much of a um of a challenge because quite often when uh, i know when i first tried carving um i found it really difficult to what to get out of my head what um you know what i wanted in 3d in front of me um quite frustrating it put me off for ages and only in the last couple of years i've kind of come back into it and getting a little bit more confident um but it can put you off things if you're using the wrong type of timbers so we want sharp chisels and we want um, suitable timbers and there's lists online um but certainly things like lime and um and sycamore the fruit woods um, the basswood they, uh, they call lime out in America. Um, see if you can get hold of those things and, um, and make it easy for yourself. Okay, so another question. Yeah, Kevin's asked if, um, if you go in to carve a walking stick head, please. Uh, yeah, I'd like to do that. Yeah, I've got some cool sticks ready at home. I, whenever I go out on a walk, uh, we've got a little doggy. Whenever we go out for a walk, and I always got my eye, one eye in the hedgerow, for things like that for sticks um so i've got a couple ready to go at home I'll, I'll bring them in and we can we can carve what we want on them um sometimes they're um you know two piece so you'll have the stick itself and then you'll have the head that's joined on i like them to be all one thing so i I've particularly pick out these where they've got little root balls and things like that on the end um yeah we'll we'll i think we'll do a, like a wading stick or a walking stick and we'll put like um some sort of animal head on it we'll find um something that we we all like um and we'll, we'll carve that onto it probably going to be a bit of power carving on that one um to come down into detail and also pyrography so it's a bit of a mixed mixed bag in that one okay so another question someone's asking if they can have another look at that fox that you uh you showed yesterday oh yeah yeah so this is a kind of thing so this little fennec fox um a little foxy um little fennec fox got big old ears um let's come up to camera three actually jason that's cool oh yeah now that's perfect so yeah little fennec fox got massive ears um little couple of tricky bits to get to not 100% happy with his head, the shape of his head, but that front profile I really like. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have a go at something like that as well, I think. Little kind of f uh, figures and, and things like that. Um, so, yeah, that's my little fennec fox. He's still, he's not finished yet. I've got a, a load of pyro to do on that, and I want to put the airbrush on it um, to give it some nice colour. Um, we're not too far off with this one, I think. You know, we will we'll tidy up any little loose bits, but I just want to get that texture. Actually, we can see it nicely on that camera. We can see that lovely texture um, just created with that kind of deeper um, sweep on, on the chisel. And like I say, that's going to weather really nicely. Okay, so we've got some more questions. Yeah, just from Sleeping Dog. Um, sharpening. Sharpening. Sharpening a bit yesterday. Yeah. Um, we have a look today. Yeah. So we had a little peek at sharpening. Um, there are loads of different methods of sharpening, and we're going to cover that. I think we're going to have to cover that on another video because it's it's quite an involved process. Um, not something I'm going to quickly get across. But let me. Um, I use Tormec in here. So uh, like I say, I always have a Tormec in the room at the ready. Um, that's going to do lots of, of little jobs for me. Um, what we can use is uh, water stones. You know, appreciate we're, we're spoiled rotten in here. We've got all the cool tools and um, sharpening methods we can, um, we can use. Um, but it, at home, you know, I haven't really got that luxury. I haven't got Tormec at home. Um, so we can use uh, wet stones. So things like these gouges uh, with the, the um, deep sweep on them, you can get these kind of profiled um, honing um, water stones. Um, they're usually quite high grit, so they're they're kind of more your your finishing tool honing um, type of stone. Um, so these are keeping sharp. 
And this is what I keep going on about is with your carve and chisel, just keep on top of the sharpening. Um, don't allow them to get too dull um, because reshaping can be uh, quite tricky. Because of that, um, that kind of belly profile you get on, um, on these types of chisels. Okay, so it's a rounded bevel on these. Um, and I think we're going to have to look at that in a different video quite a lot of information to put across at the end of, of this one. Um, so we'll, we'll look at sharpening. Jason's done some really good sharpening videos, um, but carving almost stands alone uh, for, for sharpening. Okay, so we will get back to that. I use um, a reverse running um, grinder at home um, with mops on it, um, but it has to be reverse running. Um, you can't have that um, wheel coming towards you with a mop on it. Okay, that is uh, really important. Um, something else I just want to quickly show you before we sign off. I'm happy with my little man here. Um, he's going to go outside and, and find a home. Something I just wanted to show you um, is this little bit of line. Let's see if we can get him on camera here. That kind of burnished um, cut that we can get, the super clean cut. Okay, so this is a bit of lime, and you can see how nicely it carves. It just whizzes off. And I just wanted to show you something. I know I've left that a bit ragged there, but just have a look at how reflective that becomes. That burnished surface is lovely. Okay, just catching the light there. Um, and you're whole um, carvings can have this lovely burnished look. Um, with the wet timber, it's not going to show as much because as soon as we take that cut, um, because it's wet, it kind of swells up and throws the fibers back up. So we'll never get that kind of burnished look. Um, you could add oil and, and things like that. But for me, this is a natural thing. It's just going to um, you know, find a home in someone's garden and and uh, live out its days uh, there. Okay, so another question. Yeah, just Nigel's just asked, weren't you going to do something with the eyes? With the eyes? Um, so we did um, our little kind of um, a closed um, eyelid with this one. Um, and I've left it quite stylized. I've left it, um, we've, we've put those little pairing cuts up to that almost stop cut there. Um, but there's lots you can do with the eyes. You can carve them in and, um, and drill holes for, your, for the pupils. So they're slightly, um, you know, carved in there. Um, I find they look a little bit, a little bit scary actually. <laughs> Um, they're called grotesques, um, so you know there's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, this one I've got this kind of closed lid um, style. I did it on my last one. I really liked the kind of look of it. So if we can come in on that one, um, there we go. Lovely. All right. So we can see the closed lids on there, and I really like that. It looks a bit sleepy. He's nice and at rest. He's just uh, relaxing. So that's what I've gone for on this one. Um, but again, if we want to look at um, eyes and, and stuff in a bit more detail. So what I've done on this one, because we're quite well lit in here, it's not throwing the shadow as much. But actually, when we've got the natural sunlight coming down, his brow's going to cast a shadow. And then just under here, it will cast a little shadow as well. Um, so for me, that kind of rustic look. That's a job done. Like I say, it's quite difficult to show it with the light shining straight in the shadowed areas. What if I tipped it a different way now? It's not really showing up. Um, but in natural sunlight, you'll you'll see those eyes. They look really cool. All right. Good. Well, thanks for joining us today. Um, Sorry if I didn't have a look at those eyes. Um, we, we will come back. We'll cover that on, on another thing um, and show you perhaps a, f a few different ways to do it. Um, this has been Woodworking Wisdom down here at Axminster Tools. Um, I've been Ben. Thanks very much for joining us today, um, and we'll see you again soon.